This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 285, recorded on November 17th, 2016. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios. Here in a very weird Bellevue, Nebraska, tonight, uh, like today, record-setting temperatures. I think we were close to 80 degrees. They're expecting snow by tomorrow night. So, rich, crazy days. No here. kidding. You don't have to worry about that. Well, we are going to get a little cool here tomorrow, too. Uh, we're up, we were up in the 80s today, and we have been all week. But there, the forecast is for us to drop into the 40s tomorrow for a high. Yeah, craziest thing, just to see these... 80 point or you know, 60 point temperature swings. swings yeah. But, uh, pretty crazy. Of course, we post the show with world class show notes each week out at the average guy. TV. Don't forget, you can join us on the on the new mobile app. It's not really new, but uh, on it might be new to you. Head out to homegadgetgeeks.com. Both Android and iPhone buttons are out there. Download it and get subscribed if you're not already. Many of you are, but uh, if, you, if you're just joining us maybe for the first time and you haven't subscribed yet, get out there, get that downloaded. Again, homegadgetgeeks.com. To get that, Home Gadget Geeks is, of course, uh, of course, a part of the Geeks Network. Find the link to this show and many other great podcasts, including Rich's podcast out at the geeksnetwork.com. Don't forget, we also have a Patreon link out there on the page now if you want to financially support the show. we got one and $5 plans if you want to do it. Do it for one month or just leave it running any way you want to do it. It's available for you. No pressure. Head out to theaverageguy.tv or go to theaverageguy.tv slash support. That helps the podcast. All right. Good friend of the show. He's been on here before. Rich Hay, welcome back to Home Gadget Geeks. How you doing, Jim? Good to be back. I'm doing well. Good to have you. We try to have you on, I think, twice a year or so, every six months to kind of get caught up on Windows. You're the yep. Windows expert. Uh, you're over at Windows Observer and, and Observe Tech is your podcast that yep, you do. I correct. think part of the Geeks Network, and, uh, and you're always it real is. faithful. I listen every time. I listen it to your is. podcast every Yeah, week. I've been off the air for a few weeks. Yep. Been a yep. busy few travel weeks. Uh, had an adventure to go to New York to watch the studio launch, the Surface Studio launch event. and um, and then a couple a week and a half later, I was I went out to Redmond to Microsoft for the annual MVP summit. Yeah, we're and gonna talk about prior both to of that. Us. We did we had our tech conference in Vegas, and then there was Ignite in se late September up in Atlanta, which I got to ride the motorcycle too. Since oh, I nice. live in Jacksonville, Florida, I cranked up the motorcycle and packed it up and rode it to Atlanta for the week. It was a beautiful week and five six hours, uh, six hours give or take, okay. and uh, left early in the morning under the stars, watched the sunrise. It's just a great way to ride. And That's then nice. came home after it was all over via Columbus, Georgia, where my brother lives, and went out and played some golf on the Saturday and spent a day with him, and then headed on home. Nice. So yeah, it was, it's been a busy, busy travel yeah. time. Yeah, it's good to have you on. Kind of after all this travel, we're going to talk a lot of windows tonight. So just kind of buckle down um uh, for that rich actually i'm kind of glad you slowed down on your podcast because i've been busy not i've been able to listen to them all and uh and i've been sneaking a few other podcasts in uh some new ones are out and such and and so i've been trying to catch up but so good but you've been on the road you've been really busy um of course we kind of know you you're all things windows and, and over at windows observer you're also writing for Penton, right? I am well. for Penton Technology on SuperSite Windows. Uh, I write on the IT Pro Windows site as well and our developer sites. But yeah, the, things have changed a little bit with Penton. Uh, they were officially closed out in an acquisition by a British company called Informa, a trade show company. And uh, that finalized a few weeks ago. So they bought them from the private equity firm that owned Penton uh, prior to that for $1.6 billion. I don't see a penny Holy of that. Cow. <laughs> um, well, technically I do, um, but um, but I'm still a freelancer for Penton, so I'm freelancing yeah. on SuperSite and the other sites like that, hoping that the new year brings a full-time employment gig, which it looks like they're really pleased with our properties and what we're doing. It's not something they do. Inform right. is all about trade shows, tech trade, or, you know, in different kinds of categories and stuff. And when they acquired Penton uh, as a whole, we gave them like a 50% footprint here in the U.S., and they're based out of the U.K., so it, it's in a dynamic time, so things are changing a little bit, um, but it looks like we are going to continue what we're doing. They really like what we're doing with the numbers and stuff like that, so we're real pleased about uh, that whole process. And it's just a great time to be in tech. There's so much going on. 
I mean, there's just so much new hardware, you know, whether you, whether you're a fan of any company, there's just so much going on in tech right now. It's, it'll make your head spin and it's tough to keep up with. It is. It's really hard to keep up. In fact, even as a podcaster that doesn't put a lot of time into prep or work, <laughs> like I podcast because it's the easiest thing to do and keep up with stuff, right? That's why I podcast. Right. The writing was taking too long. All the gadget testing was taking too long. But man, I can sure find people who are doing it and like you and interview them and that's easy. But even that has been tough to keep up with. But it's fun. Yeah. I think we're in this early phase of a lot of different when we think of VR and AR and mm -hmm. artificial intelligence and uh, big data. When we think of, you know, Amazon in the cloud as well as Azure, I think we're still very early in a lot of the very, oh, yeah. uh, the very awesome benefits that we're going to get out of it oh, yeah. um, as a culture. I think uh, even with Windows, there's a, we're in a new era of Windows and they're going to have to figure out where they're going with that thing and how it's going to fit into the ecosystem in the future. I mean, it's crazy. It's if you aren't an insider, it's crazy right yeah, now. Yeah, it right? is. Uh, you know, because well, well, let me go back a few weeks to the Microsoft Studio, the what they called the the Windows event, the Windows 10 event. They labeled yeah, it, yeah. and uh, it's where they announced the Surface Studio hardware, which is just a beautiful piece of hardware, and uh, some new accessories and things like that. But they also talked about Windows 10 and the Creators update. So we now know that the next feature update, this will be the third feature update released in a year and a half for Windows 10. I mean, we're talking about feature updates being on a level of a service pack. So something we used to get once a year, we're, we've already had two in the first 16 months of its existence, and now Creators Update is coming. And they showed off the 3D stuff, right? The cool Paint 3D, and those that I want the app on the phone that scans in this stuff 3D, please. We asked for it while I was in Redmond. We got a great presentation from that team, and we asked, and we got a blank stare back. So... But there's some really cool stuff going on. In fact, today they released a new fast ring build, 14971, and now Paint 3D is no longer an app you got to go download. It's part of the OS. It's in box. So everybody has that. And I'm telling you, I've been playing with it, whether you've got touch or not touch. You know, you can do a lot with that with the mouse as well. So, And then, of course, during this event, because you mentioned AR and VR, they talked that there's an event coming up next month. In China during, um, I forget the name of the thing where they go over there and talk to the OEMs, but they're going to, they announced some $300, um, not augmented, virtual reality yeah, headsets. Yeah, glasses, headsets. Yeah. Headsets that are going to be part of this new creators update release, and we're going to hear more about that sometime in December. So even Microsoft, uh, even in today's build, there I got to run a test against my in fast ring device to see whether or not it would support Windows Holographic because that test is in the system because they're adding every Windows 10 install with the creators update. It's going to have Windows holographic available. What that means, I don't know. It doesn't yeah. mean you can plug an AR headset. Maybe it's related to these VR headsets they're talking about. But you're talking about Microsoft coming in at a $300 price point with, an, with a virtual reality headset that will run on most average computers compared to like the Oculus Rift that costs $700 and you need a $1,500 PC to run it. Right. So Microsoft, somebody questioned why was Microsoft doing this, this VR stuff when they're really the whole lens and AR is really a big deal. And it's, they're coming in to undercut. They're coming yeah. in to get their share of the market before the market outgrows because yeah. that's what happened to them in mobile. They missed the market on that and tablets in a sense too. So yeah. I it's think good, it's, it's totally an effort to get in on it early. Yeah, it's a good time to be in. I, I think we're still in the early, the early stages of it. You, you mentioned that build. I cannot get that build on my surface. Right, you were saying it, oh, it just keeps crashing out. Yeah, I've been having some. Uh, I I tried downloading it yesterday. This is the 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 you know the penalty you pay for being on the fast ring. So yeah, it's, and this is a PC I don't use very much. And of course, you know, if you're on those rings, you can expect problems. And I, it doesn't worry yeah. me or make me upset. I could always blow this Flat thing away and, right, and, yeah. right, and put, put windows back on it. So no big deal. So. Well, they did release last week's fast ring build that just went slow ring this week, 14965. The ISO is out on the Insider website now. So you can go download a clean ISO from a build that's only a week old. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. It <laughs> won't even update. I'm, when I click checking for updates, I was getting an error and now I'm getting nothing. So yeah. We'll just kind of have to see. That's one of the beauties of being on the fast ring. Uh, that's yep. out there. Hey, tell me a little bit about. I, I assume you got to see this. The you know the Surface Studio. I hard. did. Yeah. Tell got me to a get up about close it. and personal it with it. I mean, it, not that it's you're touching premium it. device. Yeah. It, you know that sensation when you saw Surface for the. And I'm not talking about early surfaces. I'm talking about the the 
when did they move to the magnesium color? Surface three, right? I Surface think so. Pro three. So, Pro, Pro three. one and Pro two were the the darker color. It is a premium look and feel. I'm telling you that zero gravity hinge that is just one finger up and like down. Butter. You just touch uh, it like butter, like yeah. like putting your finger through a hot stick of butter. Yeah. It, it's awesome. a beautiful device. I I saw it used by an architect that was doing CAD based work. I saw it used by an artist who had that dial on the screen and was spinning it for their interaction with it and with a pen. Um, I stood in front of one and played Forza Horizon 3 on Windows 10 with it. And I'm telling you, the graphics blew away my Xbox One. Wow. And, and you know, I, I've got a 1080p HD yeah. screen my Xbox One is on. And, and it was smooth. It was great. In fact, I was showing some of the Xbox team there how to play Forza Horizon. But it, it really is a beautiful device. And it's a premium device, and the cost is there, too. What, three grand for the i5, I think, with yeah, HD. Starting at three grand. Starting right? at three grand. And then you got to get up to, like, 42 or so to get the top-level mm -hmm. one. But it's a beautiful device. And based on what I'm seeing from the reviews today, you know, there. Were, remember that whole week? Remember because there was in a 24-hour, 48-hour period, Microsoft announced Studio, and then the next day, Apple announced the MacBook Pro upgrades. And if you follow social media and pay attention on social media, Microsoft won yeah. that week, big yeah. time, even with the Apple faithful. So yeah. it was pretty nice. neat to see that. And these reviews are along those same lines. People talking about these are premium devices. You know, they're not meant to be on every desktop. That's why there's not why Microsoft builds these things. I think they build them to set a standard and to get the, and we've seen it. The OEMs have started coming in more and more over the last couple of years with some really high quality, great devices. Yeah. I, uh, so it is downloading now. I should not probably good. not do that because it's going to affect my, <laughs> affect my band. Well, I got the P this PC has priority. So did you, uh, so Dave McCabe just got the dial. Uh, he yep. ordered that separately. He has a surface, Pro, surface book and a surface pro four. Yep. And it will work on those two because work on those as well. screens, screens, right? He has it, but it's got to get an update. There's an update coming in the new year. It's not out yet. That will allow that dial to actually work on the screen the way oh, you see it in so some it, of the videos. So you still use it, it Bluetooth work. connected. No, no, it does. Yeah. Uh, it's a Bluetooth low energy device. So you can actually pair it with any, uh, any Windows 10 uh, 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 version of Windows 10 via Bluetooth. And if the app supports that rotary dial, it will work. But it, the Surface Book and Surface Pro 4 both need a firmware update for you to be able to put it on the screen. And the reason those two, it's the Pixel Sense screen. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes that makes good sense. It'll, you know, this is the somebody thing. already made the Space Invaders. By the way, I saw oh, it on Twitter. <laughs> somebody already built Space Invaders. That for would be cool on a on a on the studio. Yep, on, well, on studio on too. But he had it on Surface Book. He yeah. had the dial down there and was spinning it and clicking it to shoot the the oh, the enemy. That's great. Ninety nine dollars <laughs> for those dials. That's right. That's where they're at today. Any other hardware that you saw out of that announcement? Um, they did. Besides? They announced a couple of keyboards. So one is their typical ergonomic keyboard, right? The split keyboard that takes your hands apart. It's 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 got the Surface keyboard look. So if you if you have a Surface Book or uh, I guess that would be the closest you, to it with the Surface Book keyboard. But it's covered with that a la contra material, right? For the where the palm rest is. And so you have the split keyboard, the ergonomic, and you have a standard kind of keyboard. Both look very similar colors. It's that magnesium, silver magnesium color. The ergonomic one, the split one is covered with that, that special material that they produced a keyboard cover for. Um, so they had the two keyboards, the Surface Dial, and they had a new Surface Mouse, which looks a lot like the Bluetooth mouse. The, it's called the Microsoft Bluetooth mouse, I think. So it's got a wheel, and it's kind of got it's kind of got an apple-y look to it, right? Mm -hmm. The white apple mouse, mm -hmm. but it's got that same magnesium kind of surface color. So that was the peripheral stuff they announced around the different studio models. Anything attractive for you on those? Would you change out any of your equipment that you might um, use? I, 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 I love the the Arc Touch mice. I just can't get enough of these yeah. guys, so I have them on every system I that use. One, yep, see, yep. and I. So mouse-wise, no. I certainly want to give the keyboard a try because I'm pretty rough on keyboards. So I tend to use mechanical keyboards now, gaming keyboards, uh, because they hold up under the pressure of what I, I used to have. The love the Reclusa, right? The Microsoft Reclusa. Remember that keyboard? Yeah. That thing weighed about six pounds. Yep, there you go. It, that that Microsoft Reclusa. Yep, that Microsoft Reclusa 
weighed about six pounds, sat on the desk right in place, didn't move, and I loved it. Well, they, they stopped making them, and they slowly disappeared from the shelves. So I, I'm interested in the keyboard, at least, to see how that normal – I don't like the split keyboards, but I'm interested in that keyboard to see how, how well it is. It's a, it's a wireless one, so, and I think, it's, I think all those devices are wireless Bluetooth, actually. Uh, as opposed to dongle, but I, I'm not. They're pretty quiet, sure. right? Those they, are pretty quiet keyboards. Yeah, they weren't real noisy, right? Um, and it's the same keyboard that comes with Studio. So the standard keyboard does. You would have to buy the ergonomic as an upgrade, but the mouse and the normal keyboard comes with the Studio. Yeah, I like those kinds of keyboards for podcasting because they're quiet and you can type. Yeah, so on you can them. type. You can type during the show. They don't come up. I I actually years ago bought the Mac versions of all those and. So I've been running these Mac keyboards on my Windows PCs for forever. Ah, there you They're go. Yeah, great keyboards. It's got USB, you know, USB port on the side. Tons of things you can do with them, and so I've enjoyed that. Uh, it's good to see Microsoft catching on to that. They have not yeah. been. Logitech's had a keyboard like that that's been kind of like it, um, but I'd love to see it come from the OEM or from. I, I from have Microsoft one of the Logitech themselves. new ones in the corner that I still got to pull out of the box and test. One of their all-in-one medium yeah. keyboards, um, but but yeah, you're right. The other area that I'm a little disappointed with Microsoft in is the fact that their hardware company who makes cameras, makes webcams, have not produced a RealSense Windows Hello camera, a third-party one. There's so many people out there I think would pay $80 for that camera. You know, you get an HD webcam as well as the Stargazer is $150, you know. And don't get me wrong, it's a nice camera. It's got a nice look, but that's a pretty high entry bar, right? So I'm a little surprised. Now, I'm hoping out at CES that companies like Logitech and some of these other camera manufacturers, third-party types, do make some Windows. We need to see – got plenty of fingerprint readers, right? And I think slowly but surely you, with Windows 10, you may see more OEMs putting fingerprint readers on their keyboards or on their actual laptops or 2-in-1s. But, yeah, that's the stargazer right there. Um, it, and it works well. Don't get me wrong. I've got it, and it's working. It, it does Windows Hello as fast as, it, as the Intel Dev Kit camera I had, and um, I'm pleased with it. But um, you only, yeah, it's got 30 frames at 1080, and then it's got uh, 30 at uh, the 720, mm -hmm. or vice versa. But so not is, as good as the C920, right? Uh, what the camera on this yeah. one? Yeah. Uh, no, the C920 is faster at 1080p, right? I think so. Yeah, so, but again, this has got the hello functionality, so it's got the three different cameras you need for Windows Hello, and plus it's got the microphone array. Each of those two ends are, have some microphone array, and it's, a, it, like I said, I'm pleased with the device. It's a great device to use. Even the dev kit camera was great, but where are those good consumer-level, you know, third-party cameras for this thing? Again, I got a great USB key uh a uh, fingerprint reader on the side of my Spectre that I just swipe and log in with. I got USB ones hanging off the desktops. Those are easy to come by. It's the cameras that people, I think, would really get a kick out of. It is odd. I know I listen to your show, and you talk about that quite a bit. And and I, I it, it is odd that the, the manufacturers are uh, surprised. There 16 must, months later. There's, there's got to be something weird in there that we don't know that is just keeping a reason that's keeping. Because if the manufacturers thought they could make money off this, they would be doing it. Yeah, I guess so. Or maybe they just think like Razer. I mean, Razer's premium anyway, right? So their yeah. keyboards, their devices are all premium as it is. So for them to charge 150 for a, a 1080p webcam that has Windows Hello on it, it's not out of reach. I just think they're going to get it included. At this point, they're like, you know what? It's going to be built into laptops. Well, and this is it. Gonna, exactly. Yeah, exactly. we're not going to mess with the it. devices do have it built in like the Surface yeah. devices do. But I'm, we're seeing more. Of the And I, again, I think they will also add fingerprint readers. Remember, there was a day when you could buy a laptop had a fingerprint reader on the they were keyboard. really bad though they would they were the that kind they, they were yeah they were the kind you had to swipe they were awful but well I, you know what I, that's the only kind we of need like these, I tested right? I, we need these or right. whatever oh, the, exactly or, or the, the android back, equivalent it's on the back yeah. of my nexus right right, I got right the on. same thing on the nexus and it's so fast and i i've got so yeah i i love to see more of that windows hello is a really neat feature um but we'll see maybe at ces yeah. i'll get surprised and there'll just be a ton of them that's that event was that was your New York event, right? So that, that was, was right. Yeah, that Surface you, Studio you got there just in time. Yeah, seven thirty flight left at one thirty a.m. Got to JFK at three thirty hotel at four. Got an hour sleep, shower, shave on Long Island Railroad heading into Manhattan. Met up with a couple of the guys that I know from Twitter and some of the other sites and had some coffee and things like that. It was kind of a chilly morning up in New York that day, but it was a good event. It was I, I think the reaction to that device 
even though I think there was some, the, some of the rumors were out there. I think, I don't think anybody was a hundred percent sure quite what we were going to see. Um, and, um, it, it's good. And the creators update stuff for windows 10 will be a good update. I think I'd, it makes me wonder if Microsoft's gone to a theming kind of thing for their feature updates. You know, what's next fall is going to be, we don't know. Redstone and that's a March it. deployment, right? So we're that's a, yeah, we're it's estimated months. for March, 2017, based on some documents that floated out on some other systems, but they say spring. 2017. Yeah. What, Rich, what's the advice you give people, even tech enthusiasts today on, on the insider stuff that's coming out? Like if you're the average guy is on windows 10, right. And they're on the, right. they're on the stable build. Yep. Current branch. Yeah. Current branch going on a stable build. When, when people ask you like, Hey, should I be trying insider builds? What, 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 what advice well, do you give? Them? First thing I ask them is what, how many systems they have. If they're running one system, my recommendation is you don't do that. You stick with Windows 10 current branch, the current active release, and that's where you stick at. Um, you know, if they wanted to try some things a little early, then I would probably tell them release preview ring. Because on release preview ring, you'll see some of the apps early because they are also now releasing apps on that fast, slow release preview ring pace so they could test them out. Um, what is What you'll find surprising is, is that there aren't, considering the numbers, there there's a lot more people on slow ring than there is fast ring. Uh, actually, fast ring is not quite as large as you would think it is, but the circles I'm in on social media, everybody's on fast ring, right? Yeah, we're all so, complaining about right. it, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so I would recommend anybody who only has one system and they depend upon that system, you don't do it. It's just not worth the risk. Uh, what we're, We are now 13 builds in on the PC side, nine on the phone side, mobile side for Redstone 2. That's the creator's update. Um, and we're still in November right now. So we still have four to five months or so. Uh, now, nine we'll times out of 10, most of them are steady. Yeah, and this time of year, you're going to see a yep. slowdown in December yeah. because everybody at Microsoft takes like two or three weeks off. So we will see a slowdown of some sort. And then I would expect just like it was last year, it'll pick up come the new year. But um, if you're only single system depend on it, don't do it. If you have another system around the house that you don't mind if it gets trashed or has issues, go for it. Um, and if you're not real comfortable with bleeding edge, go slow ring. You, as we'll see, uh, they just released 14965 to slow ring. That was a fast ring build last week. They've released that now for mobile and PCs. But this is only the second slow ring build in since August for insiders. So if you like that kind of a steady, slow pace, that was where I would tell you to go. But fast ring, you're, it's weekly. Fast right. ring right now is, is weekly. I don't think that that is necessarily, quote, unquote, their schedule, but that's certainly how it has turned out. I think we have to go back a month to where we saw a two-week time frame where we didn't see a build where we skipped a week. And then with 14971, right, that's the most current one. When, that when was I the think, one released today. When I think about the highlights of that from a user standpoint of new functionality, yep. what's on there that users would – like the average guy would be oh. would be interested in looking at. Well, um, let's see. Um, EPUB format books, right? Electronic publication books, formats. There's lots of places to go download those for free, including Microsoft's uh, Press Library. They just built in functionality in Edge to read those file formats natively, kind of like PDF, except yeah. now they're EPUB. Yeah. Edge, Edge is getting better at reading. Edge is, all this Edge stuff. is improving slowly but surely. In fact, yeah. I pinged on Buffer yesterday on social media and said. You know, I can get in there on edge and start to do things really fast. And then as time goes by, it really bogs down. They aren't working on edge, admittedly. And they told me that. But they're, they're looking, they're rooting for it, as they said, and things like that. But uh, so the EPUB format being read in the browser, that's available now in this newest build. They added um, Paint 3D, which everybody saw demoed at the Surface Studio launch, was initially released as an app. That is now an inbox, kind of like Paint Normal. So in, from 14971 forward, Paint 3D will always be installed. Um, let's see, what else did they do? Oh, the office, this is kind of neat. You know, there were some reports and rumors a few weeks ago that there was this office hub coming to Windows 10, right? Uh, I think it was Zach Bowden from Windows Central kind of discovered something that indicated that it was coming. We expected maybe an announcement in New York a few weeks ago during the Surface Studio event didn't happen. Well, today, as part of the uh, 14971 release, one, yeah, 14971, 
they released an update to the Get Office app. Now, since day one on Windows 10, there's been a Get Office app, and it's basically just been an, an advertisement for Office 365. So it would give you links to be able to go download, you know, to access it, subscribe, and things like that. Well, today that turned into Get Office again, it's the same name, and it's a beta now, but it is the Office Hub that everybody was thought was coming. So now you open up this Get Office app, and it's got your most recent files. You can access your subscription account. You can do installs from there. You can do all kinds of stuff with this now. And it, from the point of even installing individual um, programs from your subscription if you want to. So, so that was a big deal, I think, because that, whereas Get Office, I would uninstall and get rid of every time because it kept coming back like a bad penny. Now it's <laughs> worth keeping. And now I suspect eventually either that functionality stays in that app like that or maybe eventually gets a home somewhere in the system. So that came out in this one today. Uh, they did make a kind of a significant change. They, they changed the default command line uh, program, so shell. So normally we're used to the command prompt, right? Uh, the command.com. We're used to that. It's kind of a command CMD. line interface. Yeah, CMD it's a command line interface for interacting. We don't use it a ton these days, but it's there. Well, they flipped the switch and made PowerShell now that default instead of command prompt. However, the settings are still there to go back and change it to command prompt if that's what you're comfortable with. But PowerShell has a lot more functionality than the old command prompt. So they made that flip. Whether that stays that way and they, they eventually remove command prompt, who knows? We don't know. In fact, one of the things that happened today, do you remember several builds ago, they, they featured a snooze feature in Edge where you could take a tab and snooze it, basically a Cortana reminder. You can make a Cortana reminder from right clicking on the tab, saying snooze, and it would pop up say, and give you a reminder to come back in an hour or two hours or something like that. And you could write yourself a note about why you were there. Well, they pulled that out. That's gone now because telemetry and data and feedback showed that it just wasn't accomplishing what they expected and that's the other thing that I wrote about today was that it's a lesson in kind of living in pre-release software stuff comes and stuff goes there is no guarantee that features we see today will be in what's released in four months no and that frustrates people remember messaging anywhere oh, before yeah. the anniversary yeah. update yeah now that yeah. is fun are you using have you had a chance to play with that now they've incorporated no. it in no. Skype preview you can now do what they call SMS relay through Skype preview on the mobile devices, it actually becomes the default SMS program on Windows 10 mobile. So I'm using it and I'm to testing and stuff like that. It's very similar to what messaging everywhere was, but now Skype is the window. Yeah. And I've been, I have been, we've been doing a ton of Skype with it. And so I've been met with the preview and right. we call, you know, we use it on the weekends to call my son in California. And we, you know, so we've been using quite a bit of it. It has some issues and it's having some issues uh, even here on Windows 10 on a normal, not insider ring PC. Yeah. see this one I'm using. If I try to call people and they don't have the right, if they're on a Mac or they don't oh, have gotcha. a, an updated version of Skype. I can't necessarily yeah. figure out what's going on, but it can't connect. Yeah, it hey, might be some compatibility stuff. I know, totally. Surface 3 update, Rich, 89%. So hey, past you're past 20, that point. We, we may be in the we clear. Be there. You said four times, and that was <laughs> That's what it did for Ed Bot today. He said it on Twitter. His fourth time was the charm. Yeah, no, on the fourth go of it, uh, you know, it, it, it stuck at 23 the first time. It stuck at 23 the second time. It failed on me the third time that's when i told you oh rich gotcha. it's just failing i can't get it so i rebooted deleted restarted it and off it sits at 97 percent. so i just noticed a comment in the chat room from antoine uh talking about connect uh the connect for the xbox yeah. and he's yeah. got a point about two weeks ago they released an updated driver where you can now use the connect from the xbox you got to buy a usb adapter which costs around 35 40 dollars but you can take that Connect, which are selling for less than $100 these days, and you can probably find them for less on eBay and Craigslist. places like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that could fill in that gap for a Windows Hello camera if you're somebody who wants one of those. You buy the USB adapter. Uh, there is now a driver for Windows 10 that supports Windows 10 that will allow that to not only be a webcam, but also do your Windows Hello facial login. Yeah, that's okay. a good point, Antoine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about MVP conference. I okay. didn't get out there this year, and certainly as MVPs, we're, we have a little NDA, so I'm not asking you to right. disclose anything under right. NDA. Let's just get that in the open. Anything, first of all, I really miss a week on the Redmond campus. I, yeah, it's that that, is that's, a great campus. It doesn't get lie. old. It doesn't oh. get old. This was my seventh, yeah, my seventh or 
Yeah, it must have been my seventh because I didn't go to my first one, and I think I've been to most of them since then. Yeah. So this is like my seventh time on campus. And, you know, it, it's always fun to kind of walk around that place. We were within a stone's throw of the surface building where we did all our meetings at for three days mm -hmm. with the product group mm -hmm. and that, where they have the lab where they can build the prototypes and they can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, we didn't get a tour of that place. Uh, now, they did get us tours of the anechoic chamber, the place you can go into that's like less than no sound. It's right. bizarre. You can hear your own heartbeat. Uh, and then the home of the future, they call it. They have this home of the future where they got a lot of the future technologies laid out. But they, um, it was a good week. We, it's kind of things have changed some. Uh, I'm not sure how many folks know. I see somebody comment about not being an MVP anymore. But one July, basically, MVP program is owned by developer evangelization. So on one July, they cut all the consumer categories loose. And so all of us that were Windows expert, yeah, there's the new trophy there's the, there's uh, award the new, they're sending out. This showed up for me. Yeah. Sarah, it's, it's funny. Beautiful, so, beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. You know, the, the, yep. the these, and then you stack And it's them. engraved. I never had one of my original, my MVP, other yeah, no, MVP ones the, engraved. Here's, I got the, so this is, you know, they would, they would mail right. us these, right. right? These just stack up up yep. there and That's this it. is a really nice award it is Rich. a very I mean, nice award no 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 don't get me wrong it is yeah. it, what's happened is developer evangelization owns the mvp program now so what happened on one july they cut loose the consumer mvp category so windows expert consumer surface that you were uh the security no, folks surface i was anybody I was that was consumer. anything consumer related yeah. uh were no longer mvps now what they've done in replacement of that i'll give you an example the xbox mvps for about two years now, they've been doing their own summit in February because that fit the Xbox product team release cycles. So they're owned by the Xbox product group, and that became official one April this year. But they've been doing that for a couple of years. Um, I, what, I'm trying to think of the number. I, there's a couple hundred of us Windows Insider MVPs at this point. Um, they do eventually want to grow it. Uh, which is uh, great, they, and there will be a method to that madness at some point, uh, but here's what's happened. You've taken a 24-year program, right, the MVP program, and suddenly we've got what used to be done by 25 people is now being done by two for the Windows Insider MVPs. So, yeah, they got the trophies out. They had some issues with the engraving. Apparently something went wrong with the contractor, um, but I got to tell you, meeting Joe Camp and Tyler uh, at Summit really shows that those folks are interested in making it a, a great program, a viable and a very sustainable program for the insider MVPs, more than just being an insider, more than just having insider builds on your PC. Uh, there's a great opportunity there. So I, I think they're really going to take it. It's just going to take a little bit of time, you know, so patience is required. But it was a great week. We had some awesome sessions. I don't think it's beyond MV, uh, NDA to say who we heard from. So we heard yeah. from the Defender team. We heard from the 3D folks that announced the new 3D stuff in New York a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we, you know, we, we, ha we had the opportunity to really hear and talk about where things are and where things are headed. And uh, as I said at the top of the show, it is not a boring time to be a tech fan right now mm -hmm. in, in any category, whether it be on Google, whether it be Apple, whether it be Microsoft. I mean, just look at what happened yesterday and today with Microsoft Connect, right? The big developer conference. Microsoft is now on the Linux Foundation board. I mean, come on. 15 years ago, Steve Ballmer said Linux was a cancer. And here it is now. I mean, it's just a tremendous. It's a and that only benefits the user, right? That only makes it better for the user when things are more open and when things are more, there, there's more of that competition going on for things. So I, I think it's a great time. You know, Microsoft has been doing a lot to kind of cut away, trim away the excesses and things of that nature. It's part of the reason why the consumer MVP categories were cut from DX. But they're certainly making a solid effort, in my opinion, to, to give us a very sustainable and great program. So yeah. now I'm going to try and hang on and, and re-engage with the team and yep. maybe let some of the – I haven't had the most time in the world. So maybe let some of the uh, things work themselves out. Yeah, and, and they will. And they, it'll be there. Hey, you mentioned Defender, and uh, we've talked about antivirus in, our, in this yep. community for a lot of years. And I have kind of – on the PCs we're using, even on Windows 10 that we're using full time, I've been using like a Bitdefender, you know, and a Malwarebytes. Oh, okay. 
Did the defender team give any indication? I mean, are certainly are we to a point, and and maybe you could talk about this. Are you running Defender as your sole source of one hundred percent? Every de- Windows ten device in my house is running Defender. Has been for a while. Mm-hmm. Now Defender became part of the OS back in Windows eight point one. In fact, I just wrote a bit yesterday. I'm not sure how many people are aware. Some folks are a little bit upset with Microsoft all of a sudden over Windows Defender being in the OS. Now, this has been the case since Windows 8.1 in 2013, okay? But three years later, Kaspersky is the one who kind of popped up this week or last week and said, hey, that's not fair. Um, so I wrote a piece yesterday about Windows Defender behaves extremely well in the face of other third-party, well, in quotes, well-behaved antivirus software, right? The, that it properly reports itself to the system so that, and if Defender knows that there's a valid protection in place, it will shut itself down and get out of the way. The only time you'll see it again is if your signatures expire or the software expires and it, it sees that you're not actively protected. It'll pop up and say, Hey, this is, I'm not going to, are you aware that your protection is expired? And it will do that for about 30 days before it will just turn itself on and give you some level of protection. Here's the secret about antivirus, anti-malware, anti-phishing, all that stuff and security online. It's the software is a level of protection. You've also got to engage this stuff up here between the ears that goes to the clicking finger, right? Because if you're, if you're wildly blindly clicking on anything and everything, you are going to get infected. Um, you know, no software product is 100% of able to protect you from every threat. It just happens too fast. Yeah. But, but they showed us, when we talked to the Defender team, they, they, they showed us how you could be on one system and, but this is talking about the cloud, right? We were talking about cloud and how it's really coming to bear with stuff. They showed us on one system how it would detect a threat. And I'm not kidding you. There would barely be time for that threat to be identified and logged and, and sorted out in the cloud. And you could step to the next machine. It would a- avoid running that file just because it had had that alert already. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that quick, Defender learns and looks out for stuff. Um, you know, the whole screen filter piece with Edge and Internet Explorer is very active in looking for that stuff. But again, if, you, if you're engaged and you're paying attention, you're going to be fine. I, knock on wood, since I've been running Windows Defender and before it, Microsoft Security Essentials, we are yet to have an infection in here of any kind. And you're, you're smart consumers, and You have to too. be a smart computer you're user. You're smart consumers. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to be a smart consumer. Uh, light, latest test shows Defender in the middle of the pack kind of moving towards the top. So it certainly is capable of, of giving you good, and it, it's got all the smarts, right? It's got all the heuristics. It's got all the ability to, because when those URLs get reported, whether it be through Internet Explorer or Edge to the cloud, that automatically becomes part. You don't even have to have a signature update when one of those things get reported, you know, because we get a lot of signature updates for Defender. If you're running Windows 10, you see them all the time. Right. But you don't even have to have new signatures in order for a threat that was detected in the last 24 hours to get detected. And I just think that's tremendous. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I think enthusiasts, uh, I, I think the verdict is still out. I mean, it, it, we, I, I hear from a lot of guys like, I'll never use Defender. I'm yeah. always going to use the third party. I hear you on your podcast. You're, you're pretty content with it, I think, yep. for the average user. Um, I, uh, that's why Microsoft did it, Jim, because it, with Windows 7, it, you know, there was just, and even XP, let's go back as far as XP, systems were vulnerable. People would get that six month trial piece of software with the new computer and activate it and then not renew and they'd have expired signatures. And you, and even working as a computer repair technician, you'd go and find these machines that were just riddled with stuff because they didn't have active, proactive kind of protection. So Microsoft is treating that as looking at Defender as that, M- Microsoft's not out there tooting Windows Defender's horn as the number one antivirus product but it's certainly adequate enough to provide enough protection to most users to keep that from happening. And, and that's kind of their approach. You know, yeah. they don't care if you don't use it. They, and that's why they've, they've prepared it so well to get out of the way of other well-behaved third-party security software. And it won't conflict and it will just set it aside. But then again, if things expire, it's going to pop up and remind you. So it's, it's proactive to make sure there's some level of protection if you don't keep your third-party level up. Yeah, it's, it is a, a form of protection. It is exactly point. that. It is a form. Although, um, yeah, no, I, it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, we haven't had a big, we have not had a big antivirus debate in a while. Hmm. It just doesn't seem to be an issue anymore when we talk about PCs. I think folks have, have moved on. 
how are you feeling, Rich, just about the general, you know, where, where we are at with Windows overall from a direction for Microsoft? Here's, let me tell you my gut feeling, and then you can, you can respond okay. to this. I think they are moving so fast, and there's so much great stuff in it, but I'm just not sure the average consumer is even keeping up because most of the PCs are in the enterprise, and the enterprises are locked down. They're not moving these things. And at home, most people have moved to their phones, right? Most average yeah, a lot of people, people have, yep. They have moved to the phones or they, they're or not using or an their iPad PCs, or something like right, that. Totally. They're not using their PCs as like they used to. And I'm just afraid that we finally have a Microsoft that's just racing ahead with all kinds of really cool stuff. But it's a little bit of the, the pot in a, in, from a population standpoint. So it's a little bit of crickets at this point. I think. Yeah, you know, that's my feeling. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just right. No, feeling. and I I get you. The, we certainly have seen the numbers that you know. I I've never believed in the post PC era to begin with, but right. we certainly are fewer PC users. And the biggest reason behind that is what you just described. Most people have moved mobile. Most people are using their phones for that daily contact, that regular contact and stuff. Uh, most people are using an iPad or maybe an Android tablet or a Fire tablet, th you know, thing like that. So I think the, the occurrence of desktop PCs in homes are slowly going down, right? We know that XP has finally floated down under, what, under 6 or 5%, I think. Uh, Windows 10 or Windows 7 is, is now below 50% of the Windows devices out there running. So and if you go one point four billion, it's still a lot of PCs out there. Windows 10 is now, uh, the latest November numbers had it up around 29%, I think, or something in that ballpark. I may not be exactly right. But the, those two are, are moving towards a point where they're going to cross at some point down the road. And I think way before we ever saw XP die off. And I think a big part of that was the upgrades, right? 400 million active users now. The enterprises are locking things down, but Microsoft has kind of left the door open for them to be in on, on when we talk about servicing branches, current branch. That is the current release that is out for Windows 10. So that is 14393.447, I believe, based on the latest cumulative update. And then on, uh, that's current branch. So you have current branch for business, that's the anniversary update. Oh, I'm sorry, go back one, November update, right? That's four to eight months back off of what most consumer systems are using. And then you have long-term servicing branch. Long-term servicing branch is a gutted version of Windows 10, no store, there, there's nothing in there. It's intended for a non-production device. So the greatest way I saw it at Ignite in a Windows 10 session, if you have Office on that device, it is not. A, it is a production device, not a, you know, a unique use device that's really targeted towards systems you don't want to have to upgrade, but about once a year. And you have to do a physical in-place upgrade. You can't do a build to build. So uh, maybe on a shop floor that runs a bandsaw or runs a jig or run, you know, those types of CNC, uses, like typically not connected to the internet. Right. Those are the long-term servicing branch. So I think Microsoft is given enterprises and that's where the growth is going to come from now. Now that the free upgrade is over, the only place growth comes from is either the sale of new devices running Windows 10 because Windows 7 and 8.1 or Windows 7 and 8.1 are no longer allowed to be sold by OEMs. That happened a few weeks ago. And then um, you're going to see that. So the new devices will bring in Windows 10 and then enterprises as they make the migration. So. I think we're certainly going to see it slow down a lot. Yeah, I no, totally. I think we're going to see it slow down. I think enterprises themselves are going to cause this, and most people are going to get Windows at work. Yep. And so their their experience with this, and as I look at the 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 new update, my Creator Studio, no, the Creators Update, Creators Update, what they're yeah. Creators, update. Creators Update. You know, I kind of go, "There's no way they're going to let this in the enterprise." <laughs> you know, not even not even close. Yeah. And so I think, and you know what? I actually think they anticipate that and they're going to let the enterprises skip it. So yeah, and they can. Right. Yeah, they can defer yeah. those. They can defer from a cycle, a feature update and just yeah. skip it and go to the next one. And they have the ability to do that with group policy, active directory and things like that. Yeah. But, but unfortunately, I think the creators update, what is it about Windows, this Redstone 2, right? The one we're testing that is also known as the creators update. What is it that makes it, quote unquote, the creators update? They're adding Paint 3D. They're going to add AR or VR type functionality to it. Um, but out, and they're going to add, some, build in some really cool capabilities into Word and PowerPoint to use those 3D images. But 
that's still a lot of productivity too. I just think the creator's update name is a very consumerish name, right? So I, I don't, it doesn't mean it's only going to be a creator's related update. There's going to yeah. be other under the hood stuff and improvements and stuff like that. So, yeah, well, I just, it's an interesting time to watch because I just, I, sometimes I feel like all these windows improvements are coming out to us, the enthusiasts, right? And we're making a big deal about it, but, <laughs> and but there's a vast majority of people wow. out there that are oblivious to it at work. We that still haven't even that. moved on to the anniversary update. Right. I mean, it's that's, well, if you're on home, you're there, you would have mandatorily updated you. Yeah. Because on home, you can't stop the updates. Not on enterprise. Enterprise, and that's what they built into it. The current branch for business usually runs four months. So, so with the November update from last November, that's a year ago now. So this is a certainly extended period that that is the current branch for business build. But if they get to two times a year feature updates, you're talking about eight months. That a, that an enterprise could delay an update for up to eight months. So they could go four initially when they defer it in Windows Pro. It's a four month deferment. And but for feature updates, and that's another confusing point, is that in Windows Pro and Enterprise and, and Education, they can defer an update. They can defer updates, but it's the feature update they're deferring, not security updates, right. things like that to the OS. It's just the feature aspect of it. So what we would have used to call a service pack in a sense, but, but cumulative updates, that has worked well for Windows 10, so much so that they've decided to go to that, me that uh, methodology for Windows 7 and 8.1. So that just started last month. So here in a few months, re reinstalling an old version of Windows 7 should not be a pain to update. You know? Yeah, today if you do it, it's, it's literally two days. Yeah, it's, it's, it's painful. Work. It's painful. Yeah, and it's with just, Windows 10, it's great. It downloads the most recent cumulative update, and you're going. You're well, good. Well, So I think they're developing some cool technology. I think, right this, I think we are very early on in this whole test bed of this Windows as a service thing. And that every time they, they work on it, they improve it. They certainly got to get more quality built into some of their uh, releases and some of their updates. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's part of the hazard of this fast pace too. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I think we have another couple of years and, and you know, they're, I, I'm, I'm just afraid the consumer base that they're hoping will latch on to this has already moved on for the most part. And uh, yeah, the I enterprise is kind of like, eh, you know, mm, yeah. just give me something freaking stable. <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. Kind of deal. Uh, hey, in the meantime, it's never been a better time to be an insider. Like, oh, I agree. There's tons of great stuff coming out. And if you're a yep. tech enthusiast at all, you will like know what's going on. With oh, Google. yeah. So, Rich, anything else in the, you, you traveled around a bunch. When we think about Microsoft or Windows, before I ask you some other questions, anything else that, stands out that we haven't talked about yet that you've come across that's that's interesting well of, of my trips this fall late september i was in atlanta for ignite uh and so there was a lot going on there especially cloud related a lot of cloud-based stuff so you know we see a lot on the uh aws side on amazon web services side we certainly see google doing more they i just saw this week they've entered in an agreement with intel to kind of help build out some of their cloud stuff so, you know, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of that movement to the cloud. Uh, a lot of enterprises are looking hybrid, right? They want to kind of be a mix of on-premise yeah, and cloud. Have to be. Uh, have I to think be. the biggest fear people have when it comes to cloud is control, whether they have control of their data or not. And I think, I, again, I, I'm more focused on the Azure cloud, Microsoft's cloud, but you certainly don't give up control of your data. I mean, when you look at things like, uh, Office 365 groups, the latest is Microsoft Teams, right? The Slack, quote unquote, Slack competitor. We've been testing it now for about three weeks at Penton with a group of us. And it's slick. I mean, it's built right on top of all the Office 365 services that are already there. Um, and, you know, I love Slack. Don't get me wrong. We use Slack for communications on a daily basis. But, you know, Microsoft Teams is a pretty slick way to kind of bring things into one pot especially for projects, especially for people who are spread everywhere. So I think Teams is something to really keep an eye on. Um, the cloud stuff, the developer stuff, just this week, Microsoft during their Connect 2016 conference, it's an online conference, um, Visual Studio for Mac has been released. It's actually a version of what was a Xamarin on Mac, but it's now called Visual Studio. So cross-platform really means cross-platform. I mean, you can develop for iOS with that. It's C-sharp, or uh, is it C-sharp, or uh, what's the other term? Uh, Swift, right? Uh, the for, other, iPhone. The, the iO, for iPhone. For iOS. You can do that with that. Visual Code is a, is a Linux, Mac, 
Windows based uh, code editor. You've got Visual Studio 2017, they're now calling it. That's it was under testing, Visual Studio 2017. So the stacks for Microsoft development are coming to any platform. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. what OS you're running on. So I think Microsoft's still got a challenge on the developer side, you know, to get the developers getting their stuff built for and using the bridges they built to get stuff from iOS and Android over to Windows. You know, it, it still continues to be the big argument is apps. And I got to tell you, I'm on Android now, have been for a few months. It, apps aren't all they're cracked up to be. You know, I do a lot of single use downloads for apps. If I'm traveling a lot, I'm going to have the airlines app on my phone on the front page. Once I'm done traveling, that sucker goes mm -hmm. free up space. So, you know, I think the whole app discussion ha ha hangs on the really popular apps, Snapchat, you know, the stuff we don't have that are very popular social the media apps. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's not, it's, not the, it's not these airline apps and things like that because guess what? On Windows 10, on Edge, you can do most of that stuff through the browser. So I think we're really seeing a point where Microsoft is just continuing to push this open, this cross-platform. Their, their phrase now is any developer, any app, any device or something like that. So it's just like mobile developers, first, cloud first. Developers, yeah, developers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I think that's kind of where – that is where I think the next – big movement's going to come from is so they're kind of settling into a routine with windows 10 and the way they're updating and the feature updates the uh, the cloud is coming and growing big time they just did government cloud right they got new servers in texas for government cloud they just opened new servers in europe and germany that are even stricter when it comes to access to that data by law enforcement and other people so so i think they're kind of they're they're starting to i think they're about to start to hit their stride i think kind of things are in place now they've disrupted things a lot and i think now we're going to watch them i mean they're it, investors are thrilled with microsoft right yeah, now well, that's stock sure. is over 60 dollars yeah. yep. it's doing well they're making cuts where they need to make cuts and save money um and and now to, i even at ignite they announced that really cool ai stuff right the 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 new processors that are in their cloud uh in their azure data centers that can translate a 20 you know a a, what is it? A, a what was it, a mile high stack of documents into another language in like 0 0.1 second. Mm. So AI bots, all that kind of stuff, as I think, where we start to see more and more of the future. Yeah, yeah. I think we got to get some of that stuff off the data centers, off the big, you know, off the Azure clouds, and get them downstream to where they work. And you know, there's some great stuff coming in Cortana. There's some yep. awesome stuff coming in with with Alexis and the Echo. There's, I mean, Google uh, just re just released a new tabletop Alexis-like device. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. No, they've got their oh, own. No, their that's own the Google home. home. Yeah, the Google, Google Home. home yeah, it looks like it renews it air freshener. Yeah, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah, you're like, well, yeah, they just announced sure today. Room smell nice. Alexa can now send for AT and T customers. Alexa can now do text. You can mm. initiate a text from an Alexa device. Great. Yeah, it, it's well, it won't be long. I mean, I don't that's have any of those things. So that's going to be the AI. Hey, Drashna was asking, is there a PayPal app for Windows? Um, I Windows don't file? recall. I don't, I don't remember, but I certainly know I've accessed the PayPal website through yeah. Edge browser for just for testing purposes. Um, right. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, don't get me wrong. There's some real benefits. I love this Nexus with the fingerprint reader because I can authenticate my fingerprint to get into LastPass. You know, LastPass on Android is smart enough to fill in the blanks in apps and websites, whereas on Windows 10 Mobile, it doesn't. Um, I, I think, I think right now, Microsoft is kind of maintaining Windows 10 mobile. It is getting updated on almost as often as, like I said, there's been nine new builds of that since August. Uh, they're not going to stop updating it. I, I think mobile, I, this, this is, I have not heard a thing under any kind of way from anybody. This is a rich hay opinion. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe at some point we're going to see from Microsoft a seven to 10 inch tablet with LTE, Wi-Fi running Windows 10 mobile. It, it, whether you want to call it a Surface, a Surface Mini. Mini or whatever, yeah, whatever, I think it's going to be running on an ARM-based chip. So great power consumption, right? And it will, it'll be in that seven to 10 inch, kind of that iPad mini range. And LTE would be important because people want the connectivity out there as well, but have options. And I think that's what we're going to see sometime. You know, Surface Studio was very high-end. We've got the Surface Pros. We've got the Surface Books. 
it's time for Microsoft to set a standard there. If you, if you follow what they've been doing and what they've used the surface line of hardware for, it's kind of been to establish kind of a baseline of what these kind of devices should be like. And we've seen the OEMs take that bait, take that, that lead from Microsoft and do things with them. So I think the day is coming that we're going to see Microsoft Surface kind of device, whatever it might be called, and it's going to be running Windows 10 Mobile. That's why they're still developing Windows 10 Mobile. If Microsoft had no, no intention, because there are still some OEMs building phones, just had the XP, HP mm -hmm. X, X3, right, the Elite, got a couple other devices that are coming out. So they're still there for OEMs that want to build for it. But I think Windows 10 Mobile, would that not be a great implementation of Windows 10 Mobile, right, on a 7 to 10 inch tablet? I mean, it's great. The Stream 7 is awesome with Windows 10 full version on it, but I don't use it like that. Right. I would love a, an OS on it that was lower overhead. And that type of a that type of a would device be. would be spectacular for that yeah, consumption. It would be. It'd be there'd be a nice sweet spot in there for it, for yep, sure. Very sweet. Got to get the price point right, and uh, got to get the use, kind of the usage of it right. And I think if you can built an LTE that just works. Yeah, that it, that would almost have to be. Have to be. You know, it, give them a choice Wi-Fi LTE or whatever, but but I think you'd have to do LTE there. And yeah. Surface Three, although it sounds like they're not replacing Surface Three, the LTE one, right? The right. the the non-pro. Yeah. So now where are we going with the rest of Surface? You know, we, it seems like everybody seems to feel like in the spring with around creators update, we'll see a Surface Pro 5 and Surface Book 2. Now we did see, that was the other device that was released in New York, the Surface, what is it? Surface Book with performance base, they mm -hmm. called it, right? A little bit thicker, they moved some things around, got better fans and cooling on it, actually extended the battery life significantly. By as as Panos put it that day, we just put more batteries in it during the presentation. <laughs> Love Panos. Said, we simply was he put his more batteries self in, in huh? the presentation. Was he as typical Panos? Very much so. Yeah, and uh, and so I, I really do believe um, perhaps RT got a reprieve when Intel can the atom. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I I still have an RT hanging around the house here. It doesn't do much. My I wife has my old Surface Two when we travel, so she uses that for reading the web and doing her email. But um, and, I, and I have the Spectre and the Surface Book when I move around. But I, I do, I do think Microsoft's going to hit that spot because that's a spot that's not been addressed yet. And and the Stream Sevens and the Eights and but we haven't had a real spectacular. Not and I'm talking about a tablet that doesn't have a keyboard attached to it in any way whatsoever. You know, you could always pair one Bluetooth. But I that that's the next kind of window when with Surface Studio, Microsoft went high end. You know artistic style yeah and so i'm I, I think there's another hole and i think it's at that lower end you know rich what's amazing we had uh randy cantrell on last week and we we're talking about we, we 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 went back in time right and we look at that device that studio device at three uh, say it starts at three thousand dollars yep it was not that long ago 1981 uh -huh. when we paid six or seven thousand dollars for a computer that's right that didn't do very much I mean, these nope. were, I, you know, we look at all the, in fact, I think somebody posted it on our Facebook group at one point in time, you know, you, these old Apple or the old Microsoft ad, or not Microsoft, but oh, IBM. The the magazine ads. ads. Yeah. 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 The ads. Yeah. Three, four, five thousand dollars. And yep. I'm not saying the whole, the whole world went out and bought one, but a lot of people did. A lot of people in those did. days. And uh, we are so, that price point has been pushed down so low yep. with PCs. That when you offer a really nice three thousand dollar computer, yep. people just people freak out. out. Price, yep. yeah, they freak out. It, so it's it's um, you know, now there are some limitations with that Surface Studio. They're not upgradable, so you can't upgrade it. That little base is sealed. It's got great ventilation upgrades. and stuff. Nobody upgrades anymore. Well, I mean, I, we do. I, uh, we, we do. Yeah, uh, there we you do. go. But so most users. And, and that's the that's the challenge sometimes for I think guys like myself and you and and some of the guys in the room is that we're kind of those we're those enthusiasts, so you know we're the guys who do upgrade our PCs. And when we look at PCs that are coming out on the market, we look for that opportunity. That remember but back in the day, laptops used to always be upgradable memory wise. Some even allowed you to upgrade the video card. They had the little panel on the bottom where you could get at that stuff. Now that's not the case. Those things are sealed. You can't do anything to it to upgrade it. Um, so, you know, yeah. desktops are one thing, but you know, and I'm, I'm with you, 
you know, one of those surface, even at an i5 level, I think an eight gig of RAM, one of those surface studios would be just a tremendous, that they need to make a surface monitor. That monitor is what struck me more than anything. Yeah. That, when you saw that rolled out on stage, when it was dark after the intro video, it was just so crisp and I was sitting back. So there were chairs and then I was in the first row of, ch of desks and that thing had to have been 50 yards, 60 yards away from me. It was so crystal clear. Huh. It was just unreal how bright and deep those colors were. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I have screen envy. I'm not going to oh, lie. Yeah. I've I, seen that thing. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yep. I know I would never, Sarah would divorce me if I, <laughs> if I bought one of those. That's it, guys. I'm on the street. I am going to be broadcasting live, not from the average guy.tv <laughs> studios, but from Starbucks exactly. because I will not have a place to live and any Wi-Fi. But that being said, they are beautiful. They yeah, are beautiful they devices. That, that's podcast. one thing they get right. That's one yeah. thing Panos and that team gets right, and that is the yeah. look. That is the experience of that device. Well, that screen is laid out in just the right way for podcasting and a lot of – I mean, yeah. there's a lot of great yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a 4.2, I think, so. right? Or 4.2 or 3.2. I can't remember. But exact size. He showed us with the piece of paper, you yeah. know, exact duplicate yeah. of that 8 and a half by 11 piece of paper. Yeah. It is. It's uh, it's beautiful. Rich, as we kind of bring this in for landing, any right. other outside of the Microsoft ecosystem, any gadgets that you're uh, that you, that you got your eye on watches, whatever? Yeah, well, I, I you know, I've the, the Microsoft bands have stayed on the shelf for a long time now. <laughs> I haven't had them out. I have traveled without them. Uh, currently running the Nexus uh, 5X. Yep. Brand new, yeah. by the way. This is brand new. They sent Surface me. Two. Mine, oh. you know, a, a band too, yeah. Oh, okay. Mine did the tour, right? Split, right? Yep. Send it in. Place for Send everything. me a brand new one back. And, I, I uh, don't, I don't know if we ever see Microsoft do a wearable. They've had very poor luck yeah. with both Surface Band One and Two with the quality. People ask of the me all the time, like, "Ooh, what is that?" They'll see me messing with it. They're it's like, a "What cool is device? That? Don't get me wrong. It's a neat, especially Two. They did such good improvements on Two. Um, you know, I, I'm running the Nexus Android right now. I'm. Um, I had an opportunity to test a dual boot Windows 10 Android tablet. It was kind of a weird experience. Uh, never kind of picked up the whole using an Android tablet thing. Um, outside of that, I, you know, there's not a whole lot on the periphery, I think, with, with my, my focus so much on all the Microsoft stuff. Yeah, no, right um, you know, but there's a lot of good stuff happening across technology. I mean, we knocked on that whole Apple touch bar thing, right, when it was happening. They were announcing it. But it is creative to a point. Now, why will Apple won't give those folks a touchscreen, I don't know. But um, it, it is a unique implementation and idea. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and did you see what they just did this week? Did you see this $300 picture book that they've released? No. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. It's two versions. One's a small one for $200. One is a larger one for $300. But it's a picture book with pictures of Apple products and design from the Apple's history. It's a coffee table book. Yeah but it's $300 for this coffee table book. And if you want the smaller version, not smaller in number of pages, smaller in size, it's $200. Oh, here's, mean, this is like when you get a gift <laughs> from a friend and it's a picture frame and it's a picture of them. <laughs> oh yeah, very nice, exactly. Hey, thanks exactly. for that Christmas present. Yeah, I just found that it. very entertaining. Yeah. But yeah, come the new year, Jim. Uh, I mentioned to you before the show started, I'm heading out to my first CES in January. So. Yeah. I am really excited to get out there and kind of make that experience, having never been there. Um, and I, I really, we're kind of determining our coverage now, but I think we're really going to focus on uh, IoT. You know, connected devices is a very, very uh, big and growing and uh, interesting market. There's a lot around it, both from a security perspective and what they can accomplish and what they can do for you. I mean, you know, you see the big things like the Nest thermometer and, and things of that nature, the Ring doorbell. But, you know, there's a lot of other stuff out there. I mean, at past CESs, we've seen the silly things like the, the toothbrush or the spoon or, you know, this Bluetooth connected and vibrates when you eat too much or something like that. To me, those are just, you know, gimmicky. But I'm really interested to kind of, because we're growing our coverage on IoT and I think there's just, a, they got to figure out security. There's a big cloud connection as well, no matter who your cloud is. So I think IoT is another area that, you know, is going to continue to just, it's kind of a wild, wild west right now. Yeah, I think the biggest market in IoT is control. And, you know, hey, who's to say that next year's second feature update for Windows 10 is not, you know, the builder's update 
and it's related to IOT and that kind of thing. You know, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? IOT is great. I think we're finally to that spot where it's getting really, really useful. It was really gimmicky and gadgety. It's very gimmicky for early on. A lot. And I got a home, um, Dave, when we were at the meetup. When we were at the meetup, Dave gave me this Home 8 uh, to try out. Right. I've been messing around with it. Is that and like an alarm system? Security alarm, system? Yep. It's an all-in-one security. You got a camera. Um, it's got uh, indoor sensor. It's got a. Uh, it's got a few door sensors uh -huh. in this. Cool. In this, and, and it comes with a hub and a keychain where you can arm arm it. And you, you, know, you can arm it off the keychain. Pretty cool. We're going to talk about this more on another show. Um, I still cool. have a little testing to do with it, but pretty good. I mean. Yeah, would I would I use that? Would I is that the product I'd go with? I want to try a few more before I jump right. into this, uh, jump into this market. But um, is it usable? Totally. You know, cool. it's one of those things you're like, okay, yeah, for a couple hundred bucks, I could set up my own security system. That used to be, you know, we used to be kind of uh, held hostage by the security companies. They're yeah. the ones that had oh, that yeah. gear, magnetic strips, those kinds of things. Yep, yep. And um, and now uh, just about anybody can can get that done. And but so, I, I think control is that market. How do I bring all this stuff together? How do I bring all these different yeah. brands and their devices into one central control instead of having to have 10 apps on my phone to control the 10 different things I have in my yeah. house? Well, be right. your Hue lights or your alarm there or yep. your Nest thermometer. Something's got to happen in the control world. It's got to kind of be like what Azure has done and what Microsoft has done with give me a single pane of glass to bring all those services in and let me have one single view of how to be able to control them and read them and see what they're doing. Yeah. If you're, if you're uh, for the listeners, if you're interested um, in, in home automation and you're not subscribed to home on, which is rich Richard Gunther's podcast that he does each week, Richard is just killing it right now in the home automation space. Cool. And he just had uh, Veronica Belmont on a show. Talking. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I think, um, Richard's doing probably the best job I've seen yet covering just the home automation space and doing a great job of it. And it's been interesting. I think I've been listening to Richard for a couple years now, maybe two. And man, boy, the space has gotten mature in those mm -hmm. two years uh, that we've been talking about it. So it's, is it perfect? No. I mean, they're still fighting over right. standards and, you know, how they're going to do those kinds of things. But yeah, if that's a great podcast to listen to, I highly recommend it. That's been one, it out. one of my good ones. You know, it's one of those I, I catch. I think he's every other week. I don't think he's every week, but but he goes in the rotation. I'll catch him on the weekends or something like that. Okay. When, I'm or when to I'm check traveling. That out. Yeah, no, it's really good. Called Home On is what that's called. And uh, you guys, you can find Is he that. in the well, Geek Network? He's not. We uh, thought we had those guys for a while, Josh and and uh, Richard and those guys, Dave thought he was going to be able to pull that off. And for whatever reason, he hasn't, you know, Dave's shifting all his stuff too yeah, with Reset no. and all those. I mean, Reset's been good too. I mean, I've I've enjoyed listening to Reset. That's been kind of a good podcast. Uh, gives him a chance to be more flexible. You know, he right. was getting killed trying to do what I do, which is, right. I, can, I can't do this unless I do it live. That's the only way right. I know how to do this. Somebody just said in the room that he recorded live tonight. Oh, well, cool. Tony did. Yeah. Oh. Very nice. I don't know why. I don't know why he would, but, but <laughs> well, the same reason I would, which is it doesn't get done unless we do it live. Right. If I sit down and I don't have a live audience, I don't even know how to talk. I mean, right. I'm like, Ugh. well, Ugh. yeah. And I'm a one man podcast. So for me, yeah. it's, you know, well, when I good sit down that. in front of the mic, it just works yeah. for me. No, like, you're good I'm at traveling that. and th things are crazy. You know, I kind of yeah. get off the air for a few weeks, but yeah, no, I, know, but I you, understand you what you mean. Down. You crank it out. That's kind of your MO. Four in the morning, you're up, cup of coffee. Yep. Let me blow through this stuff and get it out, right? And I'm just, it's just a different, uh, for me, it's just a different. Um, I hear you. A different a different vibe. Yeah, you know, Tony says, uh, Jim Jim's the most consistent podcaster I listen to. Thanks, Tony. I, I work hard to be here every Thursday. And we can't do every Thursday, right? Yeah. But I work really hard to be here every Thursday. It's challenging. And have great guests like you. So, Rich, thanks for coming. Well, I appreciate it. Anything else before? We no, I think I, it's been great to be here and talk to you guys about all the stuff that's going on. It is an exciting time. I'll say it again. It's an exciting time to be watching tech, period, uh, no matter who you are a fan of. Um, and yeah. in the Microsoft world, you can't ask for much more, you know, of what we've yeah. seen in the last few weeks. Yeah. If you're bored, yeah, you're, you're not, not trying. Yeah. <laughs>
you are not trying. So, well, with that, I'll remind everyone, we've got a Patreon link out there if you want to financially support the show. Mark, I'll say thank you. During the show, Mark find, gave us a dollar pledge out there, so Mark, appreciate it. <laughs> Again, it's not so much for the money. I mean, it's great. I use that stuff to help pay for stuff and the stuff that we do, but it's kind of nice to lock you guys in and just have you as part of the community. So if you want to support the, the Patreon account, you can do that. Go to theaverageguy.tv and look for the Patreon link or just theaverageguy.tv slash support. You can also, don't forget, you can contact me if you're new to the show. Everybody else knows how to do it. But if you're new to the show, Jim at theaverageguy.tv, track me down on Twitter. Rich, I think we did the whole this whole thing on Twitter, like the whole I asked you on Twitter. We went back and forth on Twitter. Oh, yeah, I about doing the show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, which is interesting that Twitter has become kind of my email for yep. certain people, right? That's just. It, it, there's the magic of Microsoft Teams. Right. It does. It kills email and lets you chat real time, or at least in slight delays with people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, Twitter does it great too. Yep. So it was one of those. And then, ironically, you get an email saying that you what you know somebody responded to you on Twitter, which is right. kind of funny. So, a reminder that the Average Guy TV platform, both uh, media and web hosting, of course, powered by Maple Grove Partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people you know and trust. You know that's Christian. For more information, head over to Maple Grove Partners, all one word, maplegrovepartners.com. Thank Roger out at WLMN Radio for his continued support as we get broadcasted live on a, I think it's Low Power FM radio station out in Grafton, West Virginia. Roger, thanks for all that you do uh, for, for broadcasting out there. Still love to hear from somebody in Grafton. If you guys ever do that, we make some pretty funny jokes about it, but we'd love to hear if you're out in Grafton, West Virginia. Just let us know. You heard us on WLMN radio you can also listen to home gadget geeks on the on the on the app we've got an app we were talking about apps earlier we have an app although i don't have an iphone app, or i don't have a windows phone app we do have one for android and iphone head out to the average guy.tv slash subscribe and uh the, the big buttons are out there to get that done we want to thank LastPass for their sponsorship they'll be out here december 15th so about a month from now amber's back in here we're gonna Come up with some kind of interesting giveaway. So you Wasn't guys gonna want to cool watch that they made their thing Twitter. free now across all your devices. Yeah. a few weeks ago, all the way. I've been a last pass subscriber for a couple of years at least, and just thought that was tremendous. How do you pay for it? That's one of the things that I. Um. Well, what's amazing? Okay, so LogMeIn has not traditionally been a company that's let those kinds of things happen. Right. Right. They've yeah. gone the other direction. And uh, and now I'll have to. So what is premium? Oh, well, well, we'll ping Amber when she's here. What does premium get you? So that's uh, well. That, that, oh, above and beyond the free level now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, because it had always been had been. It was the it, for a long time. It was free on the desktop, but not on mobile. And then right. it was free on either, it's and you need to pay right. to connect them. And now it sounds like it's free on both. It is, is that, free to connect your network of devices, and you, I think there's still some spots you can see some ads, so the premium gets rid of those, but there is some uh, accelerated oh, support and things like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Okay. But still a well, great service. I love it. No, right on. We'll catch up with Amber here in about a month and uh, and see how things are going at LastPass. I'm going to try and have a Because they giveaway. were bought by LogMeIn, right? Log That's what you were saying, LogMeIn, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. So far, and so I, good with that acquisition. Looking like it. It's looking like it. I'm, I'm encouraged. Well, I went back to them for support, Rich, and said, you know, hey, you guys still want to do this? And I fully expected them to say no. And Amber said, well, let me ask. And it came back a couple of days later and like, yep, we'll Very do cool. it. Just send us the information. We'll send you a check. And they're on for another year. And so we thank LastPass for their sponsorship. Super. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, they are good friends of the network, and we appreciate them as well. Don't forget, newsletters back up and running again. And I just published one, although... I did realize I forgot to post it to the newsletter site. So if you head out to theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter, I'll post that when we're done with the show here. You can get always get the most recent newsletter that's out there. And in that is the next four weeks of podcasts. So if you're interested in knowing what's coming up, like you would have known Rich was going to be on there tonight, including Rich's links to, to the stuff that Rich does, sign up for the newsletter. Head out to theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter. We're live every Thursday, just about actually – Next Thursday, it's Thanksgiving here in the United States. Rich, got big plans? Are you going to do anything we fun? We do, for yeah. We, uh, we, we have got a favorite buffet, actually, we discovered several years ago. And you know, it's just me and the wife now. Empty, We're empty nesters. And so we choose to go to the buffet, which is an awesome, nice. awesome buffet. Uh, I'm talking about like two or three rooms full of different food and a dessert room. And uh, yeah, so we go and do huh. that. And then I go sit down and watch football. Nicely done. Nicely done. No dishes. 
we but will also barbecue. no leftovers. We, yeah, no, it's right on, right on. We will barbecue turkey. That's kind of my. Oh thing yeah, I used to deep fry it before we started doing this. Yeah, and this is grill, so we wrap it up and, nice. and put all kinds of nice seasoning seasonings and stuff in it, and then it sits on the grill for a couple hours. And I've got a Bluetooth meat thermometer that comes out. <laughs> of it, and then, Speaking of Internet of Things, right? It's a great thing, little eye device, uh, barbecue th- uh, t- temperature thermometer. We've talked about those here before, but. We uh, Thanksgiving here, so nothing next week. I'm sticking the whole weekend off. Four day weekend will be off. But then we get we get into Christmas. We got some great shows ahead for you. So sign up for the newsletter, and you'll know who's coming up. And we're live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Out the Average Guy TV live. Rich, thanks for coming. And with that, yep, we'll say thanks good. for having me again, Jim. <laughs>